A digital divide is an economic and social inequality to the access to, use of, or impact of information and communication technologies the divide within countries such as the digital divide in the United States may refer to inequalities between individuals, households, businesses, or geographic areas, usually at different socioeconomic levels or other demographic categories. The divide between differing countries or regions of the world is referred to as the global digital divide. Examining this technological gap between developing and developed countries on an international scale Topic. Definitions and usage The term digital divide describes a gap in terms of access to and usage of information and communication technology. It was traditionally considered to be a question of having or not having access, but with a global mobile phone penetration of over 95%, it is becoming a relative inequality between those who have more and less bandwidth and more or fewer skills. Conceptualizations of the digital divide have been described as, "...who, with which characteristics, connects how to what." Who is the subject that connects, individuals, organizations, enterprises, schools, hospitals, countries, etc. Which characteristics or attributes are distinguished to describe the divide, income, education, age, geographic location, motivation, reason not to use, etc. How sophisticated is the usage, mere access, retrieval, interactivity, intensive and extensive in usage, innovative contributions, etc. To what does the subject connect, fixed or mobile, internet or telephone, digital TV, broadband, etc. Different authors focus on different aspects, which leads to a large variety of definitions of the digital divide. For example, counting with only three different choices of subjects individuals, organizations, or countries, each with four characteristics age, wealth, geography, sector, distinguishing between three levels of digital adoption access, actual usage and effective adoption, and six types of technologies fixed phone, mobile, Internet, Already results in 3 by 4 by 3 by 6 equals 216 different ways to define the digital divide. Each one of them seems equally reasonable and depends on the objective pursued by the analyst. The digital divide is also referred to by a variety of other terms which have similar meanings, though may have a slightly different emphasis, digital inclusion, digital participation, basic digital skills, media literacy and digital accessibility. The National Digital Inclusion Alliance, a US-based nonprofit organization, has found the term digital divide to be problematic since there are a multiplicity of divides. Instead, they chosen to use the term, "...digital inclusion", providing a definition. Digital inclusion refers to the activities necessary to ensure that all individuals and communities, including the most disadvantaged, have access to and use of information and communication technologies this includes five elements, 1 affordable, robust broadband Internet service, 2 Internet-enabled devices that meet the needs of the user, 3 access to digital literacy training, 4 quality technical support, and 5 applications and online content designed to enable and encourage self-sufficiency, participation and collaboration. Means of connectivity Infrastructure 
the infrastructure by which individuals, households, businesses, and communities connect to the Internet address the physical mediums that people use to connect to the Internet such as desktop computers, laptops, basic mobile phones or smartphones, iPods or other MP3 players, gaming consoles such as Xbox or PlayStation, electronic book readers, and tablets such as iPads. Traditionally the nature of the divide has been measured in terms of the existing numbers of subscriptions and digital devices. Given the increasing number of such devices, some have concluded that the digital divide among individuals has increasingly been closing as the result of a natural and almost automatic process. Others point to persistent lower levels of connectivity among women, racial and ethnic minorities, people with lower incomes, rural residents, and less educated people as evidence that addressing inequalities in access to and use of the medium will require much more than the passing of time. Recent studies have measured the digital divide not in terms of technological devices, but in terms of the existing bandwidth per individual in kilobit per second per capita, as shown in the figure on the side. The digital divide in kilobit per second is not monotonically decreasing, but reopens up with each new innovation. For example, the massive diffusion of narrow band internet and mobile phones during the late 1990s increased digital inequality, as well as, "...the initial introduction of broadband DSL and cable modems during 2003–2004 increased levels of inequality." This is because a new kind of connectivity is never introduced instantaneously and uniformly to society as a whole at once, but diffuses slowly through social networks. As shown by the figure, during the mid-2000s, communication capacity was more unequally distributed than during the late 1980s, when only fixed-line phones existed. The most recent increase in digital equality stems from the massive diffusion of the latest digital innovations i.e. fixed and mobile broadband infrastructures, e.g. 3G and fiber optics FTTH. Measurement methodologies of the digital divide, and more specifically an integrated iterative approach general framework integrated contextual iterative approach, ICI and the digital divide modeling theory under measurement model DDG digital divide gap are used to analyze the gap existing between developed and developing countries, and the gap among the 27 member states of the European Union. The bit as the unifying variable Instead of tracking various kinds of digital divides among fixed and mobile phones, narrow and broadband internet, digital TV, etc., it has recently been suggested to simply measure the amount of kilobit per second per actor. This approach has shown that the digital divide in kilobit per second per capita is actually widening in relative terms. While the average inhabitant of the developed world counted with some 40 kilobits per second more than the average member of the information society in developing countries in 2001, this gap grew to over 3 megabits per second per capita in 2010. The upper graph of the figure on the side shows that the divide between developed and developing countries has been diminishing when measured in terms of subscriptions per capita. In 2001, fixed-line telecommunication penetration reached 70% of society in developed OECD countries and 10% of the developing world. This resulted in a ratio of 7 to 1 divide in relative terms or a difference of 60% divide in measured in absolute terms. During the next decade, fixed line penetration stayed almost constant in OECD countries at 70%, while the rest of the world started a catch up, closing the divide to a ratio of 3.5 to 1. The lower graph shows the divide not in terms of ICT devices, but in terms of kilobit per second per inhabitant. 
While the average member of developed countries counted with 29 kilobits per second more than a person in developing countries in 2001, this difference got multiplied by a factor of 1000 to a difference of 2900 kilobits per second. In relative terms, the fixed line capacity divide was even worse during the introduction of broadband Internet at the middle of the first decade of the 2000s, when the OECD counted with 20 times more capacity per capita than the rest of the world. This shows the importance of measuring the divide in terms of kilobit per second, and not merely to count devices. The International Telecommunications Union concludes that the bit becomes a unifying variable enabling comparisons and aggregations across different kinds of communication technologies. <laughs> <laughs> Skills and digital literacy However, research shows that the digital divide is more than just an access issue and cannot be alleviated merely by providing the necessary equipment. There are at least three factors at play, information accessibility, information utilization and information receptiveness. More than just accessibility, individuals need to know how to make use of the information and communication tools once they exist within a community. Information professionals have the ability to help bridge the gap by providing reference and information services to help individuals learn and utilize the technologies to which they do have access, regardless of the economic status of the individual seeking help. <laughs> <laughs> Location Internet connectivity can be utilized at a variety of locations such as homes, offices, schools, libraries, public spaces, internet café and others. There are also varying levels of connectivity in rural, suburban, and urban areas. Applications <laughs> 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 Common Sense Media, a non-profit group based in San Francisco, surveyed almost 1,400 parents and reported in 2011 that 47% of families with incomes more than $75,000 had downloaded apps for their children, while only 14% of families earning less than $30,000 had done so. Reasons and correlating variables The gap in a digital divide may exist for a number of reasons. Obtaining access to ICTs and using them actively has been linked to a number of demographic and socioeconomic characteristics, among them income, education, race, gender, geographic location urban -rural, age, skills, awareness, political, cultural and psychological attitudes. Multiple regression analysis across countries has shown that income levels and educational attainment are identified as providing the most powerful explanatory variables for ICT access and usage. Evidence was found that Caucasians are much more likely than non-Caucasians to own a computer as well as have access to the Internet in their homes. As for geographic location, people living in urban centers have more access and show more usage of computer services than those in rural areas. Gender was previously thought to provide an explanation for the digital divide, many thinking ICT were male gendered, but controlled statistical analysis has shown that income, education and employment act as confounding variables and that women with the same level of income, education and employment actually embrace ICT more than men see women and ICT 4D. However, each nation has its own set of causes or the digital divide. For example, the digital divide in Germany is unique because it is not largely due to difference in quality of infrastructure. One telling fact is that, as income rises, so does Internet use. Strongly suggesting that the digital divide persists at least in part due to income disparities. 
Most commonly, a digital divide stems from poverty and the economic barriers that limit resources and prevent people from obtaining or otherwise using newer technologies. In research, while each explanation is examined, others must be controlled in order to eliminate interaction effects or mediating variables, but these explanations are meant to stand as general trends, not direct causes. Each component can be looked at from different angles, which leads to a myriad of ways to look at or define the digital divide. For example, measurements for the intensity of usage, such as incidence and frequency, vary by study. Some report usage as access to Internet and ICTs while others report usage as having previously connected to the Internet. Some studies focus on specific technologies, others on a combination, such as InfoState, proposed by Orbicom UNESCO, the Digital Opportunity Index, or ITU's ICT Development Index. Based on different answers to the questions of who, with which kinds of characteristics, connects how and why, to what there are hundreds of alternatives ways to define the digital divide. The new consensus recognizes that the key question is not how to connect people to a specific network through a specific device, but how to extend the expected gains from new ICTs." In short, the desired impact and the end justifies the definition of the digital divide. Topic economic gap in the United States During the mid-1990s the U.S. Department of Commerce, National Telecommunications and Information Administration began publishing reports about the Internet and access to and usage of the resource. The first of three reports is entitled Falling Through the Net, a survey of the have-nots in rural and urban America 1995. The second is Falling Through the Net 2, New Data on the Digital Divide 1998. and the final report Falling Through the Net, Defining the Digital Divide 1999. The NTIA's final report attempted to clearly define the term digital divide, the digital divide, the divide between those with access to new technologies and those without, is now one of America's leading economic and civil rights issues. This report will help clarify which Americans are falling further behind, so that we can take concrete steps to redress this gap. Since the introduction of the NTIA reports, much of the early, relevant literature began to reference the NTIA's digital divide definition. The digital divide is commonly defined as being between the haves and have nots. Facebook divide The Facebook divide, a concept derived from the «digital divide», is the phenomenon with regard to access to, use of, or impact of Facebook on individual society and among societies. It is suggested at the International Conference on Management Practices for the New Economy on February 10–11, 2017. Additional concepts of Facebook native and Facebook immigrants are suggested at the conference. The Facebook divide, Facebook native, Facebook immigrants, and Facebook left behind are concepts for social and business management research. Facebook immigrants are utilizing Facebook for their accumulation of both bonding and bridging social capital. These Facebook native, Facebook immigrants, and Facebook left behind induced the situation of Facebook inequality. In February 2018, the Facebook Divide Index was introduced at the ICMAPRANE conference in Noida, India, to illustrate the Facebook Divide phenomenon. Topic. Overcoming the divide An individual must be able to connect in order to achieve enhancement of social and cultural capital as well as achieve mass economic gains in productivity. Therefore, access is a necessary but not sufficient condition for overcoming the digital divide. Access to ICT meets significant challenges that stem from income restrictions. 
The borderline between ICT as a necessity good and ICT as a luxury good is roughly around the magical number of $10 per person per month, or $120 per year, which means that people consider ICT expenditure of $120 per year as a basic necessity. Since more than 40% of the world population lives on less than $2 per day, and around 20% live on less than $1 per day or less than $365 per year, these income segments would have to spend one-third of their income on ICT The global average of ICT spending is at a mere 3% of income. Potential solutions include driving down the costs of ICT, which includes low-cost technologies and shared access through telecenters. Furthermore, even though individuals might be capable of accessing the Internet, many are thwarted by barriers to entry such as a lack of means to infrastructure or the inability to comprehend the information that the Internet provides. Lack of adequate infrastructure and lack of knowledge are two major obstacles that impede mass connectivity. These barriers limit individuals' capabilities in what they can do and what they can achieve in accessing technology. Some individuals have the ability to connect, but they do not have the knowledge to use what information ICTs and Internet technologies provide them. This leads to a focus on capabilities and skills, as well as awareness to move from mere access to effective usage of ICT. The United Nations is aiming to raise awareness of the divide by way of the World Information Society Day, which has taken place yearly since May 17, 2006. It also set up the Information and Communications Technology (ICT) Task Force in November 2001. Later UN initiatives in this area are the World Summit on the Information Society, which was set up in 2003, and the Internet Governance Forum, set up in 2006. In the year 2000, the United Nations Volunteers program launched its online volunteering service, which uses ICT as a vehicle for and in support of volunteering. It constitutes an example of a volunteering initiative that effectively contributes to bridge the digital divide. ICT-enabled volunteering has a clear added value for development. If more people collaborate online with more development institutions and initiatives, this will imply an increase in person hours dedicated to development cooperation at essentially no additional cost. This is the most visible effect of online volunteering for human development. Social media websites serve as both manifestations of and means by which to combat the digital divide. The former describes phenomena such as the divided users' demographics that make up sites such as Facebook and MySpace or WordPress and Tumblr. Each of these sites host thriving communities that engage with otherwise marginalized populations. An example of this is the large online community devoted to Afrofuturism, a discourse that critiques dominant structures of power by merging themes of science fiction and blackness. Social media brings together minds that may not otherwise meet, allowing for the free exchange of ideas and empowerment of marginalized discourses. Libraries. <inaudible> <inaudible> Attempts to bridge the digital divide include a program developed in Durban, South Africa, where very low access to technology and a lack of documented cultural heritage has motivated the creation of an "...online indigenous digital library as part of public library services." This project has the potential to narrow the digital divide by not only giving the people of the Durban area access to this digital resource, but also by incorporating the community members into the process of creating it. To address the divide the Gates Foundation began the Gates Library Initiative. The Gates Foundation focused on providing more than just access, they placed computers and provided training in libraries. 
In this manner if users began to struggle while using a computer, the user was in a setting where assistance and guidance was available. Further, the Gates Library initiative was modeled on the old-fashioned life preserver, the support needs to be around you to keep you afloat." In nations where poverty compounds effects of the digital divide, programs are emerging to counter those trends. Prior conditions in Kenya—lack of funding, language and technology illiteracy contributed to an overall lack of computer skills and educational advancement for those citizens. This slowly began to change when foreign investment began. In the early 2000s, the Carnegie Foundation funded a revitalization project through the Kenya National Library Service Those resources enabled public libraries to provide information and communication technologies to their patrons. In 2012, public libraries in the Bizia and Kiberia communities introduced technology resources to supplement curriculum for primary schools. By 2013, the program expanded into 10 schools. Effective use Community Informatics CI provides a somewhat different approach to addressing the digital divide by focusing on issues of «use» rather than simply «access». CI is concerned with ensuring the opportunity not only for ICT access at the community level but also, according to Michael Gerstein, that the means for the «effective use» of ICTs for community betterment and empowerment are available. Gerstein has also extended the discussion of the digital divide to include issues around access to and the use of «open data» and coined the term «data divide» to refer to this issue area. <laughs> Implications Topic. Social capital Once an individual is connected, Internet connectivity and ICTs can enhance his or her future social and cultural capital. Social capital is acquired through repeated interactions with other individuals or groups of individuals. Connecting to the Internet creates another set of means by which to achieve repeated interactions. ICTs and Internet connectivity enable repeated interactions through access to social networks, chat rooms, and gaming sites. Once an individual has access to connectivity, obtains infrastructure by which to connect, and can understand and use the information that ICTs and connectivity provide, that individual is capable of becoming a «digital citizen». Economic disparity In the United States, research provided by SunGuard Availability Services notes a direct correlation between a company's access to technological advancements and its overall success in bolstering the economy. The study, which includes over 2,000 IT executives and staff officers, indicates that 69% of employees feel they do not have access to sufficient technology in order to make their jobs easier, while 63% of them believe the lack of technological mechanisms hinders their ability to develop new work skills. Additional analysis provides more evidence to show how the digital divide also affects the economy in places all over the world. A BCG report suggests that in countries like Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK, the digital connection among communities is made easier, allowing for their populations to obtain a much larger share of the economies via digital business. In fact, in these places, populations hold shares approximately 2.5 percentage points higher. During a meeting with the United Nations a Bangladesh representative expressed his concern that poor and undeveloped countries would be left behind due to a lack of funds to bridge the digital gap. Topic. 
Topic: Education. The digital divide also impacts children's ability to learn and grow in low-income school districts. Without Internet access, students are unable to cultivate necessary tech skills in order to understand today's dynamic economy. Federal Communication Commission's Broadband Task Force created a report showing that about 70% of teachers give students homework that demand access to broadband. Even more, approximately 65% of young scholars use the Internet at home to complete assignments as well as connect with teachers and other students via discussion boards and shared files. A recent study indicates that practically 50% of students say that they are unable to finish their homework due to an inability to either connect to the Internet, or in some cases, find a computer. This has led to a new revelation, 42% of students say they received a lower grade because of this disadvantage. Finally, according to research conducted by the Center for American Progress, "...if the United States were able to close the educational achievement gaps between native-born white children and black and Hispanic children, the U.S. economy would be 5.8%." or nearly $2.3 trillion—larger in 2050. <laughs> Demographic differences Furthermore, according to the 2012 Pew Report, "...digital differences." A mere 62% of households who make less than $30,000 a year use the Internet, while 90% of those making between $50,000 and $75,000 had access. Studies also show that only 51% of Hispanics and 49% of African Americans have high-speed Internet at home. This is compared to the 66% of Caucasians that too have high-speed Internet in their households. Overall, 10% of all Americans don't have access to high-speed Internet, an equivalent of almost 34 million people. Supplemented reports from The Guardian demonstrate the global effects of limiting technological developments in poorer nations, rather than simply the effects in the United States. Their study shows that the rapid digital expansion excludes those who find themselves in the lower class. 60% of the world's population, almost 4 billion people, have no access to the Internet and are thus left worse off. Criticisms <coughs> 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 Topic. Knowledge divide Since gender, age, racial, income, and educational gaps in the digital divide have lessened compared to past levels, some researchers suggest that the digital divide is shifting from a gap in access and connectivity to ICTs to a knowledge divide. A knowledge divide concerning technology presents the possibility that the gap has moved beyond access and having the resources to connect to ICTs to interpreting and understanding information presented once connected. <laughs> Second level digital divide The second level digital divide, also referred to as the production gap, describes the gap that separates the consumers of content on the Internet from the producers of content. As the technological digital divide is decreasing between those with access to the Internet and those without, the meaning of the term digital divide is evolving. Previously, digital divide research has focused on accessibility to the Internet and Internet consumption. However, with more and more of the population with access to the Internet, researchers are examining how people use the Internet to create content and what impact socioeconomics are having on user behavior. 
new applications have made it possible for anyone with a computer and an Internet connection to be a creator of content, yet the majority of user-generated content available widely on the Internet, like public blogs, is created by a small portion of the Internet using population. Web 2.0 technologies like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and blogs enable users to participate online and create content without having to understand how the technology actually works, leading to an ever-increasing digital divide between those who have the skills and understanding to interact more fully with the technology and those who are passive consumers of it. Many are only nominal content creators through the use of Web 2.0, posting photos and status updates on Facebook, but not truly interacting with the technology. Some of the reasons for this production gap include material factors like the type of Internet connection one has and the frequency of access to the Internet. The more frequently a person has access to the Internet and the faster the connection, the more opportunities they have to gain the technology skills and the more time they have to be creative. Other reasons include cultural factors often associated with class and socio economic status. Users of lower socioeconomic status are less likely to participate in content creation due to disadvantages in education and lack of the necessary free time for the work involved in blog or website creation and maintenance. Additionally, there is evidence to support the existence of the second level digital divide at the K 12 level based on how educators use technology for instruction. Schools economic factors have been found to explain variation in how teachers use technology to promote higher order thinking skills. Topic: The global digital divide. The global digital divide describes global disparities, primarily between developed and developing countries, in regards to access to computing and information resources such as the Internet and the opportunities derived from such access. As with a smaller unit of analysis, this gap describes an inequality that exists, referencing a global scale. The Internet is expanding very quickly, and not all countries, especially developing countries are able to keep up with the constant changes the term digital divide doesn't necessarily mean that someone doesn't have technology it could mean that there is simply a difference in technology these differences can refer to for example high quality computers fast internet technical assistance or telephone services the difference between all of these is also considered a gap. In fact, there is a large inequality worldwide in terms of the distribution of installed telecommunication bandwidth. In 2014 only three countries China, US, Japan host 50% of the globally installed bandwidth potential see pie chart figure on the right. This concentration is not new, as historically only 10 countries have hosted 70–75% of the global telecommunication capacity see figure. The U.S. lost its global leadership in terms of installed bandwidth in 2011, being replaced by China, which hosts more than twice as much national bandwidth potential in 2014 29% versus 13% of the global total. Topic versus the digital divide. The global digital divide is a special case of the digital divide. The focus is set on the fact that internet has developed unevenly throughout the world, causing some countries to fall behind in technology, education, labor, democracy, and tourism. The concept of the digital divide was originally popularized in regard to the disparity in Internet access between rural and urban areas of the United States of America. The global digital divide mirrors this disparity on an international scale. The global digital divide also contributes to the inequality of access to goods and services available through technology. 
Computers and the Internet provide users with improved education, which can lead to higher wages. The people living in nations with limited access are therefore disadvantaged. This global divide is often characterized as falling along what is sometimes called the North South divide of northern wealthier nations and southern poorer ones. Topic obstacles to a solution Some people argue that basic necessities need to be considered before achieving digital inclusion, such as an ample food supply and quality health care. Minimizing the global digital divide requires considering and addressing the following types of access. Physical access involves the distribution of ICT devices per capita, dot and land lines per thousands. Individuals need to obtain access to computers, landlines, and networks in order to access the Internet. This access barrier is also addressed in Article 21 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities by the United Nations. Financial access The cost of ICT devices, traffic, applications, technician and educator training, software, maintenance and infrastructures require ongoing financial means. Financial access and the levels of household income play a significant role in widening the gap. Socio-demographic access empirical tests have identified that several socio-demographic characteristics foster or limit ICT access and usage. Among different countries, educational levels and income are the most powerful explanatory variables, with age being a third one. While a global gender gap in access and usage of ICTs exist, empirical evidence show that this due to unfavorable conditions with respect to employment, education and income and not to technophobia or lower ability. In the contexts under study, women with the prerequisites for access and usage turned out to be more active users of digital tools than men. Cognitive access in order to use computer technology, a certain level of information literacy is needed. Further challenges include information overload and the ability to find and use reliable information. Design access computers need to be accessible to individuals with different learning and physical abilities including complying with section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act as amended by the Workforce Investment Act of 1998 in the United States. Institutional access and illustrating institutional access, Wilson states the numbers of users are greatly affected by whether access is offered only through individual homes or whether it is offered through schools, community centers, religious institutions, cyber cafes, or post offices, especially in poor countries where computer access at work or home is highly limited. Political access Guillen and Suarez argue that democratic political regimes enable a faster growth of the Internet than authoritarian or totalitarian regimes. The Internet is considered a form of e-democracy and attempting to control what citizens can or cannot view is in contradiction to this. Recently situations in Iran and China have denied people the ability to access certain websites and disseminate information. Iran has prohibited the use of high-speed Internet in the country and has removed many satellite dishes in order to prevent the influence of Western culture, such as music and television. Cultural access many experts claim that bridging the digital divide is not sufficient and that the images and language needed to be conveyed in a language and images that can be read across different cultural lines. A 2013 study conducted by Pew Research Center noted how participants taking the survey in Spanish were nearly twice as likely to not use the Internet. Examples <laughs> 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 In the early 21st century, residents of developed countries enjoy many Internet services which are not yet widely available in developing countries, including In tandem with the above point, mobile phones and small electronic communication devices E-communities and social networking Fast broadband Internet connections, enabling advanced Internet applications 
affordable and widespread Internet access, either through personal computers at home or work, through public terminals in public libraries and Internet cafes, and through wireless access points. E-commerce enabled by efficient electronic payment networks like credit cards and reliable shipping services Virtual globes featuring street maps searchable down to individual street addresses and detailed satellite and aerial photography Online research systems like LexisNexis and ProQuest which enable users to peruse newspaper and magazine articles that may be centuries old, without having to leave home Electronic readers such as Kindle, Sony Reader, Samsung Papyrus and Iliad by Irix Technologies Price engines like Google Shopping which help consumers find the best possible online prices, and similar services like ShopLocal which find the best possible prices at local retailers Electronic services delivery of government services, such as the ability to pay taxes, fees, and fines online Further civic engagement through e-government and other sources such as finding information about candidates regarding political situations. Topic global solutions There are four specific arguments why it is important to bridge the gap, economic equality, for example, the telephone is often seen as one of the most important components, because having access to a working telephone can lead to higher safety. If there were to be an emergency situation, one could easily call for help if one could use a nearby phone. In another example, many work-related tasks are online, and people without access to the Internet may not be able to complete work up to company standards. The Internet is regarded by some as a basic component of civil life that developed countries ought to guarantee for their citizens. Additionally, welfare services, for example, are sometimes offered via the Internet. Social mobility, computer and Internet use is regarded as being very important to development and success. However, some children are not getting as much technical education as others, because lower socioeconomic areas cannot afford to provide schools with computer facilities. For this reason, some kids are being separated and not receiving the same chance as others to be successful. Democracy – Some people believe that eliminating the digital divide would help countries become healthier democracies. They argue that communities would become much more involved in events such as elections or decision-making. Economic growth – It is believed that less developed nations could gain quick access to economic growth if the information infrastructure were to be developed and well used. By improving the latest technologies, certain countries and industries are able to gain a competitive advantage. While these four arguments are meant to lead to a solution to the digital divide, there are a couple other components that need to be considered. The first one is rural living versus suburban living. Rural areas used to have very minimal access to the Internet, for example. However, nowadays, power lines and satellites are used to increase the availability in these areas. Another component to keep in mind is disabilities. Some people may have the highest quality technologies, but a disability they have may keep them from using these technologies to their fullest extent. Using previous studies, Gamos, 2003, NS Engiuma and Stork, 2005, Harwit, 2004, as cited in James, James asserts that in developing countries, Internet use has taken place overwhelmingly among the upper income, educated, and urban segments, largely due to the high literacy literacy rates of this sector of the population. As such, James suggests that part of the solution requires that developing countries first build up the literacy, language skills, computer literacy, and technical competence that low-income and rural populations need in order to make use of ICT. It has also been suggested that there is a correlation between Democrat regimes and the growth of the Internet. 
One hypothesis by Gullen is the more democratic the polity, the greater the Internet use. Government can try to control the Internet by monopolizing control, and Norris et al. also contends if there is less government control of it, the Internet flourishes, and it is associated with greater democracy and civil liberties. From an economic perspective, Pick and Azari state that in developing nations, foreign direct investment, FDI, primary education, educational investment, access to education, and government prioritization of ICT is all important. Specific solutions proposed by the study include, "...invest in stimulating, attracting, and growing creative technical and scientific workforce, increase the access to education and digital literacy, reduce the gender divide and empower women to participate in the ICT workforce, emphasize investing in intensive research and development for selected metropolitan areas and regions within nations." There are projects worldwide that have implemented, to various degrees, the solutions outlined above. Many such projects have taken the form of Information Communications Technology Centers (ICT centers). Rahman explains that the main role of ICT intermediaries is defined as an organization providing effective support to local communities in the use and adaptation of technology. Most commonly an ICT intermediary will be a specialized organization from outside the community, such as a non-governmental organization, local government, or international donor. On the other hand, a social intermediary is defined as a local institution from within the community, such as a community based organization. Other proposed solutions that the Internet promises for developing countries are the provision of efficient communications within and among developing countries, so that citizens worldwide can effectively help each other to solve their own problems. Grameen banks and Kiva loans are two microcredit systems designed to help citizens worldwide to contribute online towards entrepreneurship in developing communities. Economic opportunities range from entrepreneurs who can afford the hardware and broadband access required to maintain Internet cafes to agribusinesses having control over the seeds they plant. At the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the Amara Organization from Swahili word for power, sponsors a variety of outreach programs which bridge the global digital divide. Its aim is to find and implement long-term, sustainable solutions which will increase the availability of educational technology and resources to domestic and international communities. These projects are run under the aegis of the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory and staffed by MIT volunteers who give training, install and donate computer setups in Greater Boston, Massachusetts, Kenya, Indian reservations the American Southwest such as the Navajo Nation, the Middle East, and Fiji Islands. The Communitech project strives to empower underserved communities through sustainable technology and education. According to Dominic Hartman of the MITS Media Lab, interdisciplinary approaches are needed to bridge the global digital divide, building on the premise that any effective solution must be decentralized, allowing the local communities in developing nations to generate their own content. One scholar has posited that social media, like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, may be useful tools in closing the divide. As Amir Hatem Ali suggests, the popularity and generative nature of social media empower individuals to combat some of the main obstacles to bridging the digital divide. Facebook's statistics reinforce this claim. According to Facebook, more than 75% of its users reside outside of the U.S. Moreover, more than 70 languages are presented on its website. The reasons for the high number of international users are due to many the qualities of Facebook and other social media. Amongst them, are its ability to offer a means of interacting with others, user-friendly features, and the fact that most sites are available at no cost. The problem with social media, however, is that it can be accessible, provided that there is physical access. 
Nevertheless, with its ability to encourage digital inclusion, social media can be used as a tool to bridge the global digital divide. Some cities in the world have started programs to bridge the digital divide for their residents, school children, students, parents, and the elderly. One such program, founded in 1996, was sponsored by the City of Boston and called the Boston Digital Bridge Foundation. It especially concentrates on school children and their parents, helping to make both equally and similarly knowledgeable about computers, using application programs, and navigating the Internet. <laughs> Free Basics Free Basics is a partnership between social networking services company Facebook and six companies Samsung, Ericsson, MediaTek, Opera Software, Nokia and Qualcomm that plans to bring affordable access to selected Internet services to less developed countries by increasing efficiency, and facilitating the development of new business models around the provision of Internet access. In the white paper realized by Facebook's founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg, connectivity is asserted as a «human right» and Internet.org is created to improve Internet access for people around the world. Free Basics provides people with access to useful services on their mobile phones in markets where Internet access may be less affordable. The websites are available for free without data charges, and include content about news, employment, health, education and local information etc. By introducing people to the benefits of the Internet through these websites, we hope to bring more people online and help improve their lives. However, Free Basics is also accused of violating net neutrality for limiting access to hand picked services. Despite a wide deployment in numerous countries, it has been met with heavy resistance, notably in India, where the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India eventually banned it in 2016. <laughs> Satellite constellations Several projects to bring Internet to the entire world with a satellite constellation have been devised in the last decade, one of these being Starlink by Elon Musk's company SpaceX. Unlike Free Basics, it would provide people with a full Internet access and would not be limited to a few selected services. In the same week Starlink was announced, serial entrepreneur Richard Branson announced his own project OneWeb, a similar constellation with approximately 700 satellites that has already procured communication frequency licenses for their broadcast spectrum and could possibly be operational as early as in 2019. The biggest hurdle of these projects is the astronomical financial and logistical costs of launching so many satellites. After the failure of previous satellite-to-consumer space ventures, satellite industry consultant Roger Rush said, "...it's highly unlikely that you can make a successful business out of this." Musk has publicly acknowledged this business reality, and indicated in mid-2015 that while endeavoring to develop this technically complicated space-based communication system he wants to avoid overextending the company and stated that they are being measured in the pace of development. <laughs> One laptop per child One Laptop Per Child OLPC, is another attempt to narrow the digital divide. This organization, founded in 2005, provides inexpensively produced XO laptops dubbed the $100 laptop, though actual production costs vary to children residing in poor and isolated regions within developing countries. Each laptop belongs to an individual child and provides a gateway to digital learning and Internet access. The XO laptops are designed to withstand more abuse than higher-end machines, and they contain features in context to the unique conditions that remote villages present. 
Each laptop is constructed to use as little power as possible, have a sunlight readable screen, and is capable of automatically networking with other XO laptops in order to access the Internet. As many as 500 machines can share a single point of access. <laughs> World Summit on the Information Society Several of the 67 principles adopted at the World Summit on the Information Society convened by the United Nations in Geneva in 2003 directly address the digital divide 10. We are also fully aware that the benefits of the information technology revolution are today unevenly distributed between the developed and developing countries and within societies. We are fully committed to turning this digital divide into a digital opportunity for all, particularly for those who risk being left behind and being further marginalized. 11. We are committed to realizing our common vision of the information society for ourselves and for future generations. We recognize that young people are the future workforce and leading creators and earliest adopters of ICTs. They must therefore be empowered as learners, developers, contributors, entrepreneurs and decision makers. We must focus especially on young people who have not yet been able to benefit fully from the opportunities provided by ICTs. We are also committed to ensuring that the development of ICT applications and operation of services respects the rights of children as well as their protection and well-being. Twelve. We affirm that development of ICTs provides enormous opportunities for women, who should be an integral part of, and key actors, in the information society. We are committed to ensuring that the information society enables women's empowerment and their full participation on the basis on equality in all spheres of society and in all decision-making processes. To this end, we should mainstream a gender equality perspective and use ICTs as a tool to that end. 13. In building the information society, we shall pay particular attention to the special needs of marginalized and vulnerable groups of society, including migrants, internally displaced persons and refugees, unemployed and underprivileged people, minorities and nomadic people. We shall also recognize the special needs of older persons and persons with disabilities. 14. We are resolute to empower the poor, particularly those living in remote, rural and marginalized urban areas, to access information and to use ICTs as a tool to support their efforts to lift themselves out of poverty. 15. In the evolution of the information society, particular attention must be given to the special situation of indigenous peoples, as well as to the preservation of their heritage and their cultural legacy. 16. We continue to pay special attention to the particular needs of people of developing countries, countries with economies in transition, least developed countries, small island developing states, landlocked developing countries, highly indebted poor countries, countries and territories under occupation, countries recovering from conflict and countries and regions with special needs as well as to conditions that pose severe threats to development, such as natural disasters. 21. Connectivity is a central enabling agent in building the information society. Universal, ubiquitous, equitable and affordable access to ICT infrastructure and services, constitutes one of the challenges of the information society and should be an objective of all stakeholders involved in building it. Connectivity also involves access to energy and postal services, which should be assured in conformity with the domestic legislation of each country. 28. We strive to promote universal access with equal opportunities for all to scientific knowledge and the creation and dissemination of scientific and technical information, including open access initiatives for scientific publishing. 46. 
in building the information society, states are strongly urged to take steps with a view to the avoidance of, and refrain from, any unilateral measure not in accordance with international law and the Charter of the United Nations that impedes the full achievement of economic and social development by the population of the affected countries, and that hinders the well-being of their population. See also